I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is uh, Garbage Horror. Yeah, it's been so long <clears throat> since you had to say that, huh? I know, I know. It's kind of weird. It feels good, but weird at the same time. Gotcha. All right. Well, yeah, okay. So that should be item one up for business this week. Yes. First off, we're back at Garbage yes. Horror. But we've been back for a while, 43 episodes worth exactly, at our podcast. Yes. Haunt Weekly. It's a weekly podcast, as per what the name says. You can check it out at hauntweekly.com. I'll put something up here that lets you see that. And definitely check us out there. We're talking about all things haunt-related. Right. But on that note, we are back here, and we have a mission here, do we not? We do. Yes, and we are in very Spartan conditions today, if you can't tell. The, yeah. We are in Cream's White Room, sans the Black Curtains. Right. It's going to be kind of interesting over the course of this series. I think this room is going to transform a lot. Yeah, I, I think so. So, Because it's basically got the primer coat and nothing else. Yeah. But we've got until the 28th to open, so we got a lot of time to paint and make us look pretty. So come join us as these two walls get prettier and prettier over the course of the next few weeks, we hope. Yeah. We hope. Anyway. Although not for the first three episodes. <laughs> no, because we're doing all, all back to back to back. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Shh, movie magic. Ooh. <laughs> but yes, we are back doing our haunt reviews again. We have, as she just said, already been to three haunted attractions this season. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to do our reviews to them and release them over the course of the next couple of days. And first up is the first haunt we went to, the Mortuary Haunted House. Yes. They are celebrating 10 years. Yeah, 10 years, big deal. And they're doing a kind of a greatest hits thing, if you will. Yeah. It's actually a very, very interesting concept. Yeah. You know, we, we tried to do something similar with our 10 year right. last year. And of course, we're a much smaller haunt, so we had a much less room to include something from every year. They had a lot more room to play with. And I got to be all right off the bat, it was a lot of fun, actually. Yeah, I do think that this was one of my favorite years there. Um, I think part of that is because of the no theme theme. Yeah. Um, yeah it, 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 well, to kind of recap, like, the last 10 years of their history for us. Right. When they first opened in, 20, in 2006, it was rough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, they didn't have all the floors open, and it really felt like you were not getting the full walkthrough. You were paying 15, 20, I can't remember what it was, for, like, an eight-minute bolt through the house. Yeah. It did not feel like a good deal. No. But they expanded over the next couple of years. They got stronger and stronger themes. They did better and better. And then, you know, right around like 2011 or so, they really hit a peak, I thought. Right. That was going really, really good. And then in 2012, they did Cirque de Fear and oh. plummeted in my mind. That's the year that nobody talks about. Nobody. Next to the other year that nobody talks Which about. Was last year. Because basically, then they had a couple of good years. They did the zombie apocalypse, and which kind of right. fit with the mortuary theme. Yeah. And then they did the seven deadly sins thing, which looked really cool in the ads. Yeah. But made absolutely zero. It was way too complicated. It made zero sense in the haunt. Yeah. Didn't work. No. So the question was, would they rebound again? And the answer for me was at least, yeah, pretty much so. I think it was pretty clear they did. Yeah. Um, they d we did go on opening night. Yes, okay, so okay. caveats implied. Yes, implied. caveats implied. That, yeah. that we know that there were some problems probably with opening night and getting everybody there because yes. there were obvious scares that were set up that might be filled now but weren't when we went through. Yeah, okay, and there were mostly, I would say, the B or C level roles, mm -hmm. drop panel operators, things like that. Yeah. So nothing huge was missing for us. I mean, I, I feel like all the major things were there. No, like, empty rooms or anything. Right. Um, and that was one of the things that was really good this year was they had a lot of very interactive characters. Yes. And I think that helped control the flow of the people going through it, too. Yeah. Um, they've obviously paid a little attention to maybe us and maybe other people mentioning the flow going in. Right. Because they actually did this really big, like, they, you know, this <laughs> yeah. big, they do this really big, like, <laughs> countdown clock. And, of course, it's really interesting because the staff is, like, getting really into it. Right. As your group's getting ready to go in, and then, like, you get, turn in! No! You're gonna die! Eight! <laughs> yeah. And the crowd starts chanting yeah. along with them. Yeah, it actually works. Because they're really happy to see you go in and die. Uh, yeah, it works really well, surprisingly. It's a very cool concept. But it actually, and I'm assuming that time is going to be adjusted based on how long the line is and how people quickly people move through it. Right. I'm sure they can adjust that on the fly. I hope they can. Yeah. Otherwise, the throughput is not particularly great. Yeah, it, it did seem to help. Um, yeah. At least with the waiting part. To know that, okay, I'm going in in this many minutes or about this many minutes. Yeah. It, you know? 
it, it, it felt a little, um, it, it, the weight felt shorter, which was probably a good thing because we had a little bit of a screw up <laughs> yeah. with our tickets. We bought our tickets online. Right. And showing up where to go if you bought your tickets online, not exactly clear. No, there, they did have two signs that we noticed after we got yeah. out. And then, like, it's like, it's like, if, go this way if you're a VIP, if you need handicap access, or if you bought your tickets online. Yeah. <laughs> if, well, if, and it's not only that, but it's a completely different route to get in line yeah. than every other year previously. So yes. we have nine years of getting in line that's totally different from what we were supposed to do. Well, they seem to change that area every year, and every year just causes fresh confusion. Yeah. Um, They're moving where they, you put the keys on the engine. <laughs> yeah, the keys in the ignition. Yeah. Yeah, it, so that's a little bit weird. That was a little bit frustrating. Um, but the haunt itself, I thought overall was pretty good. They dialed down a lot of the whole... They, I mean, okay, the first few rooms had me kind of going this again. Yeah. Because it was all of the sexy vampresses. Yeah. And here's the thing. I'm a straight male. I am in no way opposed to beautiful half-naked women. Yeah. But it's kind of a weird thing in a haunt for me, and especially when you're, like, bombarded with it. Well, like that. yeah. And we um, we actually have started noticing what roles women yeah. play in haunts, and so that's something that we've been looking at yeah. as we go through this. Yeah, season. and if you go through the podcast, we're doing a whole series on women and haunting. Right. We've done three interviews so far, yes. and looking to do more, all about you know, like women's roles and how women are treated in haunting. And so this is an issue that we're really focused on this year. Right. And we remember that this was one of the haunts previously that almost never had women in scary roles. Yeah. This year they seem to have undone a lot of that, and they got women in pretty much every type of role. Yeah, they've, they've got at least three women in scare roles. At least. Yeah, so at least. It, it's an improvement, at least. Very, if nothing else, it's an improvement. <laughs> yes. Um, but like I said, the, the highlight for me was the interactive characters, including Ravencroft. Yes, he is back. Dear God, Ravencroft is back, and that makes me so happy. Yeah. I love Ravencroft. I love his character. I love his style. I love the guy playing him. He is so much fun to watch and interact. He's so good with the improv stuff. Right. He's one of my favorite actors in any haunt I've ever been to, and he has been sorely missed. Yeah. Um, to me, the biggest weakness this year, though, was the lack of built scares. Okay, so there was... Yes, that that is true. Yeah. Um, Most of the scares involved actors popping through curtains or coming from round corners. There, you know, and a lot of the... Nothing unique. Yeah, and that's a little bit frustrating, and especially since it not only was it not unique... But it felt like the same scares through the entire walkthrough. Right. And there was one area that, if it had been staffed, would have been their unique scare. Yes. It would have been something unique and original. And We've seen it before We've there, it before so we know that. how it's supposed to work. Well, it's but it wasn't working that night. Yeah, they okay. did not have someone in that zone. That's, it's, like yeah. I said, it's not one of the A rules. It's not like an, an, a place... You absolutely need an actor to staff a haunt. Unless that's your only original scare in the haunt. Yeah, it, it, I mean, and, and like I said, to be completely fair, if I'd been running the haunt, it would have been one of the last areas I would have staffed too. Right. Just because you have all these great character actors, you have all these improv people, you've got to fill these more act, these customer facing roles before you do the drop panels yeah. and the, those those types of you know less interactive scares. Right. Now I will tell you that my least favorite part. Okay. Was down in the dungeon area, in the basement area, mm -hmm. because it was too dark. I yeah. couldn't see anything. I could see that there was stuff. I just couldn't see what it was. There was somebody growling somewhere. Yeah. But that's pretty much it. Yeah, the basement area is a little bit of a frustration because it almost never changes year to year. Right. In fact, this was something we were talking with people outside the line. Yeah. We've been going for a long time like us, and this was like an observation we all shared, was that the basement almost never really changes. Right. And that's because that's up year-round is my understanding. Yeah. Where the rest of it's kind of a knockdown, minus the fact, you know, it's a haunted mortuary and a historic building, and you don't yeah. knock down the whole building, obviously. No. But the haunt part is torn down and made way for escape rooms and ghost tours and other stuff. And Santa's Village, if they do that again, I don't know if they are or not. I think that they got rid of that. But anyways, all that type of stuff, they tear down the haunt and put those other things up. Yep. And But the basement does not, and so obviously all the attention to newness goes into the upper floors, and so, yes, those feel very fresh every time I go through. But the basement, after 10 years, I feel like I can almost walk it blindfolded, which is handy because it's pretty much it feels like what we did. <laughs> yes. How's yes, that? That's fair. So all in all, I think they, they rebounded pretty strongly. 
Yeah. Um, I, I think I was very worried. Yeah, me too. After last year, because I mean, it's, it's kind of like in 2012 we made it surf the fear, and we yeah. went back begrudgingly in 2013, and we're glad we did. It's kind of the same deal this year. Right. It's like, oh, are we going back to the mortuary? But they're the first to open, and we're always so excited to go to haunts. Right. It's like, let's get it on, and then we're always glad we do. We're glad we did this year. Yeah. So um, I will say that they do have the blood drive still going yeah. on. It is not um, as heavily advertised as previously. No, though, but you but can get a free VIP ticket yep. if you do that. So yeah, so check that out if that is something you are wanting to do. Yep. Other than that, I don't have much else to say about the mortuary. No. All in all, solid year, good rebound, good interactive actors, obviously good ambiance. I mean, we say that every flipping. <laughs> you don't even know why yeah. you bother putting it in. Because sometimes they change the ambiance by adding, adding vinyl and stuff. circles. They didn't have a clown. They did. I liked the clown. You liked the clown. You almost never liked the clown. I, I liked him. Okay. You should like the clown, guys. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm speechless. But I think that's about all for now. So it's a solid year worth checking out, worth the price of admission, I believe. Mm -hmm. May not be the scariest haunt in the world, but once again, for ambiance and some very great interactive characters, I don't think you can beat this one. No. A lot of fun. Check it out, guys. So until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this was Garbage Heart Out of the Can Haunt Review 2016, The Mortuary Haunted House. We will see you guys in the next video.